Good morning. morning. And welcome to St. Peter's for worship. Today, we begin a focus on Jesus' discourse on the bread of life, where Jesus explains to us what truly gives us the nutrition we need for eternal life and salvation. We will follow the order of worship of the service of the word on page 38. We'll begin with the opening hymn, May God Bless Our Worship, this morning. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children, but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you, and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
God, you reveal your mighty power chiefly in showing mercy and kindness. Grant us the full measure of your grace that we may obtain your promises and become partakers of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading recorded for our the first reading appointed for this Sunday is recorded in Exodus chapter 12 verses 2 through 15. We read. The entire Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, "If only we had died by the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt when we sat around pots of meat and ate as much food as we wanted." But now you have brought us out into this wilderness to have this whole community die of hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Watch what I will do. I will rain down bread from heaven for you, and the people will go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test whether they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, they will prepare what they bring in, and it will be twice as much as they gather on the, others, on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, that evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your constant grumbling against the Lord. Who are we that you should grumble against us, Moses said. Now the Lord will give you meat to eat in the evening, and as much bread as you want in the morning, because the Lord has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Tell the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling. As Aaron spoke to the, Israelite, to the entire Israelite community, they turned toward the wilderness, and suddenly the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Say to them, At evening you will eat meat, and in the morning you will eat bread until you are full. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. So in the evening quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning, a layer of dew surrounded the camp. When the layer of dew was gone, there were thin flakes on the surface of the wilderness, thin as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? Because they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord has given to you as food to eat. The word of the Lord. We'll continue with the psalm of the day, Psalm 145. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is near to all who call on Him, to all who call on Him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear Him. He hears their cry and saves them. Glory be to 
Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 24. We read. So I tell you this and testify to it in the Lord. Do not walk any longer as the Gentiles walk in their futile way of thinking. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, due to the hardness of their hearts. Because they have no sense of shame, they have given themselves over to sensuality, with an ever-increasing desire to practice every kind of impurity. But you did not learn Christ in in that way, if indeed you have learned of him and were taught in him, since the truth is in Jesus. As far as your former way of life is concerned, you were taught to take off the old self, which is corrupted by its deceitful desires, and to be renewed continually in the spirit of your mind, and to put on the new self, which has been created to be like God in righteousness and true holiness. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Hallelujah. Alleluia. As you are able, and out of respect for the words and works of Christ, please stand for the Gospel reading. The Holy Gospel appointed for the 11th Sunday after Pentecost is recorded in John chapter 6, verses 24 through 35. We read, When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I tell you. You are not looking for me because you saw the miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not continue to work for the food that spoils, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. So they said to him, What should we do to carry out the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. Then they asked him, So what miraculous sign are you going to do that we may see it and believe you? What miraculous sign are you going to perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, just as as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I tell you. Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the real bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said to him, give us this bread all the time. I am the bread of life, Jesus told them. The one who comes to me will never be hungry, and the one who believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you. You may be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn 402.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Recently, I've been looking into how to bake bread, because I'd like to try my hand at making some homemade loaves. And as with most new endeavors, when you research them, you find out that there's quite a bit more to them than you originally thought. I had to look up information about how to make a starter and a whole host of other information like what kind of pots to bake it in. All in all, it's a bit of work. It takes some effort. As the crowd returns to Jesus after his miraculous escapes from their attempts to make him their king of infinite bread by force, Jesus tells them that their efforts would be better spent searching for a different kind of bread. Jesus urges them to search for the bread of life and eat the bread of life, because it's the bread that is heavenly and the bread that's eternal. Our efforts and actions are better spent in this way also, but as we shall learn, there's quite a difference between working for temporal bread and working for the bread of life. The crowd that had been fed by Jesus' miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 had stayed on the other side of the sea where the miracle had taken place. After Jesus left them on the next day, they noticed that there was only one boat there. There had been two, and the disciples took one, and the crowd knew that Jesus had not gone into the, gone into the boat with the disciples. So they wondered to where and how Jesus had left them. Unbeknownst to them, Jesus had joined the disciples in the boat by walking out to the boat on the water in the middle of the lake. Some other boats came to the shore and the crowd went back to the other side to Capernaum and found Jesus there. Having finally found Jesus, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? They were always smelling something abnormal, something anomalous, something supernatural with this man and it constantly roused their curiosity. But Jesus very solemnly emphasizes that their reasoning for seeking him was wrong. They sought him out for selfish reasons. They didn't even seek him out because of the miraculous signs, but because they ate and were filled. Jesus' miracles of healing only affected the sick and that was only a small portion of the crowd. But when they ate those loaves that Jesus provided and were filled, then they realized what Jesus could do for them, and they wanted more. Jesus recognizes their efforts, but tells them that they're working for the wrong food. In fact, their efforts were altogether misplaced. Do not continue to work for the food that spoils, but for the food that continues to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. They wanted earthly bread, but Jesus directs them to heavenly bread. Interestingly, Jesus says, don't continue to work for perishable food, and says the heavenly bread will be given. And then, when they ask him what works they should do, Jesus tells them this. This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. Jesus says it will be given to them, but then says that believing in the one sent is the work of God. This is because faith is a work. That may be a confusing statement, but let's analyze Jesus' words. The people come to him again looking for earthly bread, but Jesus tells them that looking for that is not the ultimate purpose of life, but rather it is to acquire heavenly bread. They ask him what they must do to acquire it, and Jesus says that their work is to believe 
the one God sent. It certainly sounds odd to hear that faith is a work. After all, we, hear, we know from Scripture full well that it says salvation is by faith and not by works, setting a clear contrast between the two. But when we call faith a work, we are not referring to it as a meritorious action on our part that contributes to our salvation. We call faith a work because it is something that the believer does. God brings it about, as Jesus said, the food that endures to eternal life the Son of Man will give you. Faith is a gift from God, but the believer is the one who believes. God isn't the one who believes. You are the one who believes. This faith is an action that you do. You didn't bring it about. It wasn't by your thinking or choosing that you believed. You didn't do any action to earn your salvation, but it was you who believed. This faith that is given to you is yours. God doesn't eat the heavenly bread for you. He gives you the heavenly bread for you to eat. And if you think that being the one eating the heavenly bread which God gives you means that you played a part in your salvation, I ask, who of you, when your mother placed a meal before you as a child, after taking a bite, would hold it up and say, it was I who brought about this meal and this nourishment. I contributed to this. It sounds ridiculous, but this is what many people try to do with salvation. Many try to emphasize making their personal decision for Christ as though that was the determining factor in their salvation, as though taking a bite of the bread God gave them somehow made their actions a part of their salvation. Even if small, humans naturally think they must have some involvement in earning their salvation. But it is God who brings about our entire salvation by giving us heavenly bread, by causing us to believe in the one he sent, the one he sent to bring about our salvation by doing it all, by suffering it all, by paying all of our debt. Look to the cross and see Christ suffer the full payment of our sins. Do you have any part in that? Did you participate in that payment? No. You weren't involved in that at all. But you were there. By the grace of baptism. You were united to that payment. Your old self that selfishly sought bread only for the stomach was crucified there with Christ. And as he rose from the dead, so you rose in baptism to a new life. One that actively believes and seeks heavenly bread. Heavenly bread with far greater nutrition. When Jesus told the crowd that they should seek this heavenly bread, they could understand that Jesus was referring to believing in him in some way. So they wanted proof of his status as an ambassador from God. They strangely still did not yet understand the connection between his miracles and his divinity. What they wanted was some kind of extraordinary sign that would make them obligated to believe. Essentially, it was an attempt to make the matter of whether or not they believed the responsibility of Jesus. Like many atheists today, blame God for not making his existence obvious, or at least obvious according to ridiculous standards they set, to stubbornly remain in unbelief. So the crowd asks for proof. With bread on the mind, they think of the manna in the desert, 
from our Old Testament reading for today. They say that their ancestors had heavenly bread, so why doesn't Jesus give them that? But Jesus clarifies a misunderstanding. The manna in the desert, which the Old Testament Israelites ate, wasn't really heavenly bread. It was heavenly in the sense that it came from the skies like the dew, but it was still a temporal bread for temporal needs of hunger. The real bread of God comes from heaven where God is, and it doesn't fill the stomach, it gives eternal life. This bread is eternal. The crowd, still not quite grasping the concept, asks for this bread all the time, thinking that it's like the manna in the desert. Jesus is plain then, I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me will never be hungry, and the one who believes in me will never be thirsty. Bread is a staple food in the human diet. It can be made from many sources and is often able to satisfy hunger, but is it long before we're hungry again and we need more bread? This is the same with the bread that we make ourselves and the bread that God provided in the wilderness for the Old Testament Israelites. Jesus is offering bread that promises real satisfaction. This bread is eternal. Again, just like last week, Jesus warns against seeking only temporal food. Physical food, while important for our daily survival, is not the highest need of mankind. The highest need of mankind is salvation from our damned state. Eternal food to give, to give us eternal life instead of eternal starvation and eternal death. This is the food we need. Jesus is the bread of life we need that prevents our eternal starvation. To eat the bread of life means to believe in Jesus, to believe that his sacrifice on the cross has satisfied the wrath of God for our sins and won for us immortality in paradise. He is the eternal bread of God. The bread of God the bread of life is the only source of eternal nutrition to prevent both our spiritual and physical death because whoever partakes of this bread both his body and soul will be kept safe for all eternity even though he may die his soul will go to where the bread which sustained him came from and his body will rest until it is awakened by this bread coming down from heaven once more on the last day Eat the bread of life. It's eternal bread. It's heavenly bread. Believe in Jesus. He is the heavenly ambassador. He gives eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll join in our confession of faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He is descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
we join in prayer. Lord God, our maker and preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. We You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. We thank you for those who teach and preach your sin and truth at this place and forever. Grant them a rich measure of patience, wisdom, and love. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, cares of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Grant your blessings to every nation on earth, where there are wars and enemies, where there is danger of living in you, where there is poverty, danger, or disaster, come with your own and all of to help and restore. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus our Lord and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you, and we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation, and bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.
thank you to our guest audience for today, uh, Mr. Daniel Baker. He is actually the cantor for the Return to Wittenberg group. So if you have any more questions about it, feel free to ask him. I'm sure you want to talk to everyone today. <laughs> uh, 